and I'm Don Pratt, host of a show here in Rogers TV where we give you a perspective of police in your community. Welcome to Policing York Region. The RIDE program. RIDE is reduce impaired driving everywhere, and today I've got Sergeant Karen Hodge from the traffic unit, and we're going to explore RIDE. Hi, Don. How's it going? Marvelous. Thanks so much again for being Good. here. Anytime. And um, RIDE's always been a big piece for, for me. Um, you, you recognize, unfortunately, how much it's needed. Yep. But it's a pretty ro robust program. It's a big program for us. Um, RIDE's been in existence for York Regional Police for decades. Yes. It's been there since yes. I was a little kid. Yes. Um, and it's a region-wide program that's supported by our Road Safety Bureau. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it's, it's definitely uh, a program that's not going anywhere. No. So no. um, for those that have seen our big truck out on mm -hmm. the roads and the pylons set mm -hmm. up and, and they thank us as they come through and we thank them Absolutely. for not drinking, um, the program has really evolved over yes. the years okay. just by, by virtue of changing environments. Mm -hmm. um, and so we still set up ride mm -hmm. programs as, mm -hmm. as people have known it, but we're a little more strategic now in how we... So I've noticed. We... Yes. Um, find people that are drinking mm -hmm. you know we we thank those that don't we really appreciate the people and Absolutely. and and, and Absolutely. really um, give kudos to the people that are making good decisions mm -hmm. uh, but we want to we want to interact with those that haven't made good decisions yes. and we want to um, hold them accountable before they mm -hmm. um, create really a horrible tragedy for yeah. either themselves or another yeah. family yes um, so that's uh, that's sort of where our strategic sure. thinking is more so now than um, you know seeing those that are yeah. making good decisions. No, absolutely. And you know, you talk about being a program. It's it's a huge program. Yep. Um, this is for me. This is my second go at uh, being able to promote it on Rogers TV. Yep. And it's I can tell you, like just just from what I've learned. I'm, I'm like Mr. Mr. Everyone else in Mr. and Mrs. Public. I see the big ride, ride truck, and oh well, that's that's where they're doing it. We were just talking before we before we come on the air that not necessarily. No, so I, I think you're right. Everybody knows the truck. They've mm. seen the truck, and, and and many people have had tours through the truck. And, yes. and the truck is basically a traveling mm -hmm. uh, breath tech yes. um, office. Mm -hmm. However. Ride isn't the truck. No. And what people need to know is that Ride operates all year long, mm -hmm. 365 yes. days a year, yeah. uh, seven days a week, mm -hmm. um, and we don't need the truck to conduct a ride program. Yes. So just because you don't see the truck yes. doesn't mean a ride program no. won't exist. No, it's almost as if like, like, that's just kind of a symbol of, of, yeah. of the ride. It supports the program. Right. And, um, you know, it's not unusual mm -hmm. for there to be three or four ride programs set up across our wow. region at any given time. Wow. Um, we also partner with uh, our friends over at the OPP yes. who have uh, some jurisdiction within York Region. Sure. And so uh, we will have mm -hmm. multiple ride locations up at several different times of the day or wow. night. Uh, and as we, wow. as we move into our holiday um, mm -hmm. festive mm -hmm. ride, mm -hmm. uh, obviously we expect that there is going to be more yeah. engagements going mm -hmm. on, more celebrations, and we mm -hmm. want to make sure mm -hmm. that before people get behind the wheel, mm -hmm. that they're sober. Yes. And so we really do want to push that message out now that people make plans, that they use all of the resources that are out there. Absolutely. Make those plans before you go out. You know, we one of the big topic for us is making good decisions. It's, you know, you, you, you read the history book on, on some of these collisions and some of these, you know, some of them have absolutely catastrophic yep. effects. I don't need to tell you that, you're, no. you're there. Um, and, and it almost always comes back down to, it was quite simply a poor decision. Yep. Yeah, I, I honestly don't think people set out no. to kill somebody no, no. Um, when they get behind the wheel. Mm -hmm. They simply have made a horrible decision with criminal consequences and life-altering, yes. life-ending yeah. consequences in yeah. some cases. And, and you know, Don, I've probably told you this before, um, mm -hmm. I've always, when I've arrested someone for impaired driving, mm -hmm. and I've, I've caught them, mm -hmm. I've always said to them, today's your lucky day. You have said that before. Right? Yes. Today's your lucky day. And you're absolutely right. I, 
we, I have caught you before you've killed someone or yep. changed somebody's life dramatically. And you know, I, I hope that one day those mm -hmm. words will resonate for yes. some of these people to make better choices and change their ways, right? Yes. Um, because we have seen the tragedy. Yes. And we continue to see the tragedy. Uh, and it's just, it's preventable. Absolutely. It is the most preventable crime yeah. out there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, people don't set out to be criminals that day. No. But it, they no. become criminals very quickly, right? Yes. When there's a tragedy. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, back to the whole ride program. We're out there and we Absolutely. are very committed to the program. We support um, every district in their mm -hmm. initiatives to get out there and, and have their own ride sure. programs. Sure. And, uh, you know, our friends See. at MAD. Are, yep. are very oh, much supporting yeah. no, no, of our of they're, our, they're our a wonderful team, a wonderful yeah. team. Yeah. Um, so, no, you know, you, you you touched on it again though. With um, you, you'd mentioned it earlier, that ride isn't necessarily just in one spot. No. Because there's a big truck there. No. It can be anywhere. It can be anywhere. It can be anywhere in the region. And it's not always huge. Yes. And you might not always see us. Mm -hmm. It's it's not always a setup ride. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we do d different variations of it. Yes. And uh, a lot of it is intelligence based, yep. and we want to be in the right place at the right time yep. to to find people. And that that's something that, that is, is certainly worth noting. And I I had my eyes open to it when we actually did a ride along with, yep. with the ride truck. Don't don't try to evade the ride truck. No. Like, no. <laughs> it, it, it was. I'm sorry. I'm laughing, but it was. It was actually kind of funny to see, you know, clear as day, somebody turning around 300 feet out. Yeah, a U-turn yeah. right as you're leading up. This isn't our first ride program. No. And and people have to realize we have plans in place mm -hmm. to deal with people who don't want to come and have a chat with us. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, the easiest choice, mm -hmm. don't drive impaired. Th that's right. Right. That's you right. don't want to get caught. You don't want to hurt someone. You don't want to kill someone. No. Don't drive impaired. No. It's very simple, right? No. So, uh, yeah, no, we, we plan for things like that. <laughs> exactly. Don, we, we, and no. we anticipate that people don't want to get caught. Of course not. Um, you know, and, and the other piece to, to ride is we can't be everywhere no. at all times. No. Right? So, and, and I've talked to you about. Absolutely. Uh, about uh, it's a shared responsibility. Yep. 911, it's, it's your call. call. 911. Yeah. Safe roads, your call, 911. Mm -hmm. We get mm -hmm. more than 50% of our impaired arrests yes. from the community calling us. Yeah. Right? Sure. I can't be, like, yeah. there's, there's more people on the road than there are police officers. Mm -hmm. That's a given. Mm -hmm. um, there's more people that know of people's poor choices yeah. to get behind the wheel after um, either drinking or um, consuming drugs. Yes. Call us. Yes. Because it could be your family. Mm -hmm. That's that right. they injure or kill, That's right. right? So, you know, no. we have another program, I'm that person. Be that Absolutely. person. Absolutely. Yeah, Be we, that person to call yeah. 911. It is a criminal offense in progress. Yes. And so, um, you know, it's not against the law for you to make that call. There's no. an exemption in the distracted yes. driving yeah. for you to make oh, that 911 yeah. call. Fair enough. Yeah, people should be aware of that. Yeah. Um, just, just that exactly. That if, if you do see an impaired or suspected impaired, you actually are, that's one of the very few times I believe, yep. you actually are allowed to pick up your phone and use it while you're, while you're operating. Now yep. obviously, um, uh, personal safety is, sure. is the first paramount yep. concern. So you, you know, don't do anything that's, that's putting you in harm's <laughs> way. No, of course not. But you know, like you said, you know, that, that time that you arrested somebody that was impaired, um, that, was a, that was his lucky day. Yeah. Well now the person that's making that phone call, they can be an element to that. Absolutely, and you know, so I'm a police officer. Mm -hmm. I, I, when I leave and I take this uniform mm -hmm. off, mm -hmm. the way I think doesn't change. No. And so when I'm driving home or I'm driving somewhere and I see somebody who is exhibiting signs of impairment mm -hmm. in their driving, I'm obviously gonna call. Sure. And what I tell people is, could you, you know, when you, you sit on the fence, should I call, should I not call? Yep. Can you live with yourself if you wake up in the morning and you're looking at the news and you mm -hmm. see that that same vehicle that you followed killed somebody? Wow. Right? I can't <clears throat> live with myself. No. Right? And I have no problem if someone no. calls the police to say, I think this person's impaired, mm -hmm. 
we don't have a problem going to investigate, no. stopping that vehicle. No. And if they're not impaired, mm -hmm. yay. Great. Yes. Maybe yeah. they're just distracted by something sure. and their driving is bad. Mm -hmm. But if they are impaired, okay. we'd it, like to have a chat with them and, and deal with and them accordingly. And in that case, if it was, you know, perhaps not impairment, as you said, maybe it was a distracted, at least now you are given the opportunity to, to give a bit of education. Exactly. Whether you lay charges or not, that yeah. I suppose is up to the up to the specific scenario. Yeah, but we would rather go and investigate that driver. If they've caught the attention of another driver because of mm -hmm. poor driving habits, poor mm -hmm. driving behavior. Sure. There's a reason for that. No, there is. And there is. you know what? Again, do you want to wake up in the morning and see that car on the news and and see that, uh, you know, a family is now? Well, no, that that eight. actually that that hits it right home, right? Uh, you you could have potentially, yep. um, you know, changed. A, uh, I keep referring to the word catastrophic event. Yeah, that's why. Always nine one one. Always nine one one. Don't sit on the fence. So, yeah, nine one one. It's your call. Right? Yep. Karen, thanks for that. Thank you. Folks, we're just going to head into a quick break. We'll be right back. Back everyone, we're going to continue our conversation with Sergeant Karen Hodge and the Ride Program of York Regional Police. And Karen, we were talking about first of all how robust a program it is. Um, uh, a piece of education that I didn't have, or you know, if I if I seen, I wasn't aware of, is yeah, it can happen. You can be running this in more than one area at a time. Yep. Now, as far as how are those I how are those areas identified? That I think we need a ride truck there. Is that um, complaint or is that? Usually it's, it's where is it safe to do so? Okay, okay. so for okay. officers conducting ride in a live lane of traffic, mm -hmm. um, safety is number one for us. Absolutely. Um, so that's usually one of the, the variables in mm -hmm. determining where we're going to go. Mm -hmm. um, another uh, a thing that we look at is, is mm -hmm. traffic flow. Sure. Where are we likely going to be where mm -hmm. people may have consumed alcohol? Sure. Or, or drugs sure. so uh, those are some of the things and mm -hmm. we have some go-to places that yep. we can light up the truck and yep. and and uh, put it out there but and, and you also said earlier that um, it could be up to the individual district yeah they may have identified yeah they may just set up randomly because they they've got mm -hmm. some time Mm -hmm. um, set up quickly and uh, you know try and run some cars through and see if anyone's sure. out there that's made a bad choice and, mm -hmm. and and move along with them but yeah sometimes yeah. it's not huge sometimes it's actually very yeah. very small yeah. you, you may only have a couple officers and they set up a very small one and it's they can be very effective and I was just gonna very say effective. and that, that can be every bit as effective yeah because yeah, I mean, we've also got we've also got social media out there too right yes. and so what you have to keep in mind and I see this all the time is as soon as something Thing is set up mm -hmm. there's people out there telling people where not to go oh wow right really? uh, sorry I'm not a social media guy yes. I, I, it's, it's not something I've ever I, I, I missed that yeah train. you know so that um, people will say ride is set up on highway 7 at such-and-such such. Wow don't don't go that way yeah okay. um, so you know whether they're telling people to avoid it because it's gonna slow them down mm -hmm. or they're telling them to avoid it because they've been they drinking. Know that you're, yeah. um, so we are mindful of that and, mm -hmm. and, and you know, take that into consideration. Again, again, that's, you know, you referred back to there's the, the intelligent part of, of how you, yes. how you create that maneuver. Yeah. It's not, it's not just these officers at this scene in this area conducting a ride check. Right. Um, I can tell you that the one that I was, I was out with um, uh, some time ago, um, there, I, I believe we had somewhere around seven cruisers. Yeah. Yep. Involved in it. Yep. And now when the big flashing pretty lights came on in the truck, I didn't see any of those cruisers. I have no idea where they were. But obviously you have 
they were a strategy. Yes, yeah, and and you know what, Dom? What you also have to know is it's not just done at night. Okay, um, we we not are an element out, I ever thought of. Yeah, there are people that drink during the day, and um, we have had a yeah. lot of fatalities occur in the in the morning. Mm -hmm. um, so people have been out drinking all night. Yes. Maybe made a really good choice to mm -hmm. take a taxi mm -hmm. or a ride share home. Yep. And still have to get to work in the morning. Yes, and but the alcohol still stays impaired. in their it stays in their system. Right. So we have to be mindful that mm -hmm. we can still be impaired the morning after. Yeah. And uh, you know there have been a couple campaigns out there with some yes. of our partners and stakeholders yes. to really educate people that just because you've had a couple hours of sleep yep. does not mean you are sober. Yeah. And and toss the myths. Drinking yep. coffee. Having you know a sandwich like no no alcohol is in your blood yeah it's in your bloodstream and the only thing that that mitigates it is time yeah and you know what and and what I will say to people is mm -hmm. the safest level mm -hmm. is zero yes that is Ooh. the only level yep. that you can be one hundred percent confident mm -hmm. you're not impaired yep. but you know my wife Liz yep. she's the same way yeah absolute total zero we go out for dinner I'm not allowed to have one. Period. Because you don't, there's no, no. guessing, right? Because no. no. one of the things, Don, is people ask us all the time, mm -hmm. how many can I drink? Legal yeah. limits, uh, 0 .08, yeah. um, how much yeah. can I drink? Yeah. Well, 0 .08, the effects for somebody That's right. can be very different Absolutely. than it is for you. And so everybody is an individual, and there's a lot of factors that play into mm -hmm. impairment. Mm -hmm. And so um, 0 .08 mm -hmm. is... Is relatively high okay. for some people. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so you can be charged with over 80. Okay. So that's one charge potentially. Okay. If you are, if your blood alcohol concentration is over 80, you can be charged with that. Okay. But there's another piece. We always you hear the word impaired driving, impaired yes. driving all the time. Yes. So impaired driving is simply your behavior is impaired by the alcohol. So it has nothing okay. to do with over 80. Okay, so they're actually two separate. There's two, char you could potentially be charged with two different okay. offenses. And so what the impaired piece mm -hmm. is uh, uh, just, you know, I, my best friend, she can barely drink two glasses of yeah. wine yeah. without, Some people can't. you know, falling on the ground yeah. and, and not putting a, yeah. a strong sentence together. Yeah. Would she ever blow over 80? Never. Right. Never. But it can still have. But that she's effect. impaired. Right. So. So impaired isn't necessarily just by alcohol. It's no. impaired. Your yep. ability to operate is impaired. Okay. So. So that could I see be by alcohol. The, the, the that could separate. be by a drug. Yes. Could be um, a legal drug. Mm -hmm. Okay. So mm -hmm. impaired is impaired. Yes. Whether it's alcohol, um, recreational drugs. Right. Prescribed. Mm -hmm. medication. Mm -hmm. You start mixing any of those and, and mm -hmm. you're creating a real mm -hmm. recipe for a disaster. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. again, if you're going to be driving a car, zero. Zero. Zero is the only number yeah. that you can be 100% sure Absolutely. you're sober yes. and you're not impaired. Anything else is a guess. And I, yeah. I, I can't scientifically tell yeah. someone. Well, uh, York Regional Police in, in recent months did a um, um, guess your yeah. guess BAC, your, BAC. Yeah. your your blood alcohol yep. uh, concentration. Um, I sat and watched. I've watched that video probably three times now. Nobody could and, guess it. And no. And, and everyone and, was different. And I, you know, I was monitoring the as as they were doing on site. You know what people's intake was, the size of people, the gender. Yeah. And uh, I guess mathematically, we want to tell ourselves that. There's, you know, there's a factor because it's male versus female. There's a factor because there's 120 pounds versus 250. Yeah. It was all over the map. Yeah, you couldn't predict. You no. couldn't guess. And, and I think that activity that we did really mm -hmm. did showcase that the only mm -hmm. number mm -hmm. that you can 100% accurately mm -hmm. determine is zero, right? Yeah. Um, so just to yeah. bring that, you know, I, I said the, you know, guess your BAC, but just to give the viewers at home an idea of what that was, it was a very controlled environment. Yeah where, um, first of all, people had to have a mandated ride home. They're yep, not allowed 100%. To, they're, they weren't allowed yep. to leave this without, or they weren't allowed to engage without the, the police knowing that they had uh, a safe yep. way home. Um, and in, again, in that controlled environment, they were given certain amounts of, and of alcoholic and, yep. beverages. And I was stunned. 
like the, the first time I'm watching, because I actually know some of the individuals that, yeah. were, that were there, and I'm like, come on, really? No, that's true. Yeah, yeah, and, and nobody could guess it for them either. No. Right? So it's very unpredictable, so uh, yeah. don't try and guess. No. Don't try and guess. No, I like, I like your motto, actually. I mean, zero is, is actually a, a great number. Yeah, I think so. Um, you know, the, moving on as far as, um, you know, as we get into the holiday season, I think mm -hmm. I mentioned our partners at MAD. Yes. And they do a whole lot of Wonderful work. Wonderful program. Uh, they do a lot of great work yes. to put the message out. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I encourage uh, our residents to tie a red ribbon on their car. Absolutely. I, I really it just do brings encourage, awareness. I really encourage that. Mm -hmm. um, it, it sends a message to, to the rest of the community that mm -hmm. you're a safe driver and that yep. you're going to make good choices, and it's a yep. pledge. It really yes. is a pledge to say that yes. um, you're going to make sure that you get home safely and that you're not going to affect somebody else's That's right. family. And you're, you're, you're just doing your very small part yep. to support a much bigger cause. Yeah, yep. right. and I can tell you, um, the victims that I know mm -hmm. um, that have lost someone mm -hmm. as a result of an impaired driver, mm -hmm. uh, when they see a car driving with that red ribbon, they really do... Mm -hmm honestly feel a sense of we're, we're making progress here yes they really no, do and so that, that makes that makes total sense so please go out there support mad mm -hmm. uh, york region mm -hmm. and uh tie a ribbon on yeah. your car let people know that you're no, going to make MAD that is, good choice Mad is one of those one of those groups that does get out into the community mm -hmm. they they are all about education yep um we've our volunteer team has had the pleasure of uh, operating with them yeah uh, we've had them out to our our local georgina home show yeah um you know, I've, I've, I've been fortunate to get out to a couple of your ride kickoffs. Yep. Um, and you hear some of the stories, and unfortunately, they're, yeah. they're not so pleasant. No, nope, none of them are. But it's, um, you know, just like we've talked about on previous shows and previous conversations that you and I have had, you know, um, that little bit of prevention. If we can get a little bit of messaging out, yep. maybe we can be a part of Yeah, if we can turn a couple of people into making better choices and mm -hmm. providing them with the resources that exist, mm -hmm ahead of time exactly um, we can maybe prevent a tragedy from happening um, not just over the holidays but every day of All, the year yeah, like you said seven days a week 365 yeah. days a year yeah um, it's it's that whole preventative piece yeah and the you know it, we were talking about you know in, into the holidays yes understood it's a heightened awareness yes but that's all it is yep um, it is because we're getting the crashes all year long. We're yes. getting the arrests well, all year long. So I, I see your reports that come through your corporate communications office every every Monday or Tuesday morning. And I got to tell you, like, I'm always just staggered by, what do you mean? The 20 more? I'm making up the number. Yeah. They're, they're different every time. Yep. But but it, but it's a constant. Well, I'm glad you say that, too. Yes. Because I, I read them mm -hmm. every Monday morning. Yes. Um, the colleagues uh, and myself in our office we have the same conversation. What more yep. can <laughs> we do? Yep. I, it, mm -hmm. It's staggering some days, and, and you mm -hmm. kind of beat your head against the wall and think, why is this so difficult? Absolutely. It's preventable. Yeah. It's, you can plan these uh, drives home. It's, mm -hmm. um, yeah, it, it, I'm glad to hear that you think the same way it, because, it you know, as, as we try and do our work, mm -hmm. much like 911, it's your call to shared responsibility. Absolutely. We also look for people to be ambassadors in their own social yeah. networks That's to share right. the word, right? That's you know, right. If I know you feel that way, mm -hmm. you're likely going to have conversations in your social network and in your family Absolutely. to share your same um, frustration yes and you know that's what we need yeah. is for people to take ownership yes. and, and share that responsibility to get that message and and that it's wrong and that there Absolutely. is a better way and and hopefully by doing it that way and, and the guests and and residents in York region that yep. that see your show yes might have that conversation as well that's right when it's meaningful, yeah, and, not and when someone's drunk. No, and, and that's that's what we're always hoping for, both on this platform and many others. Is if we can be, uh, if we can be this much, of make that much of a difference, yep. that to me is a world of difference. Yep, that could be one family. That could yep. be, you know, um, and and you know, as we were talking about before we went on air, you've been to these scenes, you see the outcomes. Like people have to know that for every action, there is a reaction. If alcohol is involved, chances are it's not a good reaction. No, no, right? no. And our our region has seen a f 
more than our fair share of it over yeah. the last couple of years, and it, it needs to stop. Absolutely. It just needs to stop. And it's that, you know, again, bringing that whole heightened awareness to hopefully reducing impaired driving everywhere, Thank you. right? So, you bet. Karen, thanks so much for coming on. Always a Thank pleasure you. having you here. Thank you, Don. Folks, that wraps up this episode of Policing York Region. Been great having you. Look forward to seeing you again.